An LRC circuit has all of these elements in it. So it's got to look like this. Voltage source V, we have an L, we have an R, and we have a C. This is why it's called an LRC circuit. You have an inductor, you have a resistor, and you have a capacitor. How do we deal with this? Well, we know that the voltage drop has to consist of the voltage drop across the, the inductor, the voltage drop across the resistor, the voltage drop across the capacitor. That looks good, except we know there's this funny business of the current sloshing back and forth differently in the inductor than the driving and differently in the capacitor than the driving. And so we have to be very careful when we add these things up. And to add them up appropriately, we actually have to use something called phasor diagrams. And this is hopefully where your second cup of coffee is going to kick in because this is a little bit tricky. Let's say we have this two-dimensional space where we're going to map out what these different voltages are. Okay. The voltage across the resistor is going to be this, directly to the right in this space. We don't know exactly what this space is yet. The voltage in the inductor is directly north. The voltage in the capacitor is directly south. This is what we mean by 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees out of phase there, it's 90 degrees out of phase there. And now it's this entire system that rotates around at frequency F or omega. All three of those things are rotating around in this space. Now, in the senior level physics course, when we talk about this stuff, we talk about the complex space with real and imaginary parts. Just think of it as vectors, right? The voltage of the resistor is pointing this way, the voltage of the inductor is pointing this way, and the voltage of the capacitor is pointing down. All three of those things are rotating around, but they always maintain that relationship. And so now, when we add up things to calculate overall resistance, reactance, impedance, we can't just add them linearly. We have to add them like vectors. So in an LRC circuit, we have the following. V is equal to I times Z. We've introduced yet a new thing, and this thing is called the impedance of the LRC circuit. Okay, this is nothing more than Ohm's law, again, but now we have this complex relationship between these different devices. All right, what is Z? Well, if I'm going to add these things up, then it looks like VL and VC are exactly opposite each other. So I can just subtract those. But VR is at a right angle to those things, and so I'm going to have to add that in quadrature. And so what we really get is something that looks like this. Okay. This is not the impedance yet, this is how the voltages go. Let's see how this applies to the individual reactances and the individual currents. We know that Z has to look like ohms. So we've got to have an R there. That's this thing. Okay. But we also have to have XL and XC like so. 
This is the overall impedance of the circuit. And to be technically correct, it's called the complex impedance. All right. That looks complicated enough, but come on, this is physics. So let's make it even more complicated. We know what XL is. We know what XC is. We can rewrite this as the following. Z is... R squared plus XL, we said, was omega times L. XC was 1 over omega times C. Okay, this is the complex impedance of your LRC circuit.